it had to be done. All the Fallout 76 fake rage and lies and myths finally exposed. All those lies from your favorite YouTubers to your favorite publications, we're destroying it all right here. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Can you hit that subscribe button? And can you also rock those bells so you get those notifications, please? That way you know when your boy's dropping doses, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, so let's get into it, man. Fallout 76, the lies, the myths, and all the, the, the bibbly gabbly gook that's out there in the community. You know what I'm saying? Let's just rip the scab right off of this one. Now, for full disclosure, people know your boy from Twitter. If you do, you've seen what I've had to say about Fallout 76, that I've been playing it. I've been playing it sometimes with other people, mainly my co-host, TRS. You know what I'm saying? I filmed several hours of me playing it. I've had some fun with the game, you know what I'm saying? But people in the community have it. And I get it. The polish of games like Assassin's Creed and Red Dead Redemption 2 got people's expectations of Fallout 76's fluidity high, to say the least. Now couple that with gamers and lords, never understanding why the series had such a big following, you know what I'm saying? Then it just added to the confusion even more. Next came this whole cross-play debacle, you know what I'm saying, where Bethesda was calling out PlayStation for not, you know, enacting uh, uh, cross-play, you know what I'm saying, across the board, and then finally PlayStation backed up its stance, but when it came out to Fallout 76 Bethesda's game, they announced there would not be any cross-play, you know what I mean? That left somewhat of a sour taste in a, in, in a lot of gamers' mouth, and that was the first chink to what we thought was the unbreakable Bethesda armor. Then you couple that with those not familiar with the series, uh, not getting the type of cookie cutter online experience that they had hoped for, you know what I'm saying? Now, people can get mad over this and finally tear down the behemoth they never understood without backlash. This, my friends, is the purest of manufactured fake rage, if I've ever seen any before. Problem is, being that with this fake rage, you have people across the community now making up shit. You have people writing for major publications saying crazy things like, you can't deny the game is broken, as if this was the case for everyone. This is despite the fact that I and others have hours of straight gameplay and accounts stating the opposite that we have been proclaiming. And of the laughable that I've heard so far is, you have content creators blaming Todd Howard over refunds not being issued for Fallout 76 when Todd Howard is the fucking creative director, period. We have too many people who don't know what the hell they're talking about, talking about this. So let's get into this. Now I want to address the lies and over-exaggeration of first, the bugs, second, what is or isn't in the game, and lastly, were people tricked? All right, first lie, misconception or serious over-exaggeration. The game is buggier than any other Fallout game ever. <laughs> all right, all right. You gotta be careful how you parse this, all right? If you're talking about the first two Fallout games which were developed by somebody else and were totally different Fallout game types, then yes, that's true. But we're talking about since Fallout 3 and that is the overall arching theme here when people say that. They want you to believe that since Fallout 3, Fallout 76 is the buggiest Bethesda game, let alone Fallout game, across the board ever. All right, so here's the problem with that. I personally have two two-hour videos. Again, two separate two-hour videos. At the time that I created this video here, that speaks to the contrary, okay? We go through this all the time as it relates to Fallout games. First, it was Fallout 3 is a buggy mess. Why did, didn't they keep the side-scrolling mechanic from the first two Fallout games, right? 
Then it was the all of a sudden new treasure of the Fallout series, New Vegas, which is now all of a sudden represents the best Fallout game ever. Remember when that was lambasted? I posted it out on Twitter. Y'all made the uh, creative director at Obsidian apologize. I'm so sorry, he says, that this game is so buggy, but we have short-term memory, so of course we don't remember that. Then it's the darling now, Fallout 4. Which, when it was re released, it was called a Fallout 3 with slightly better, you know, reskinning with Minecraft elements. You know what I'm saying? But now that Fallout 76 is out, Fallout 4 was great, and Fallout 76 is now horrible. You see the pattern here? It just keeps going on and on. Fact of the matter is that the bugs that are being reported are known to Fallout games, but this game that I'm playing here on console, on my Xbox One X, it's not buggier than any other game that I have played from the Fallout series, series since Fallout 3. Heck, TRS is playing the same game on an original Xbox One Fat. And his gameplay has been buttery smooth for the most part. You know what I'm saying? As buttery smooth as a Fallout game is going to be. So we need to stop this trash, please. And again, I got two... Two hour videos of footage that prove to the contrary of what these liars have been saying. I will leave the links to those videos below for you to opine in. <laughs> Next, lie, myth, and over exaggeration. There's nothing to do in the game. <laughs> okay, so this is where the crackpots and the fake ragers get exposed, okay? Again, I have two, two hour videos speaking to the contrary. And trust me, I'm doing way more than fetch quests as these content creators and publications doing the line want you to believe. I'm doing recover missions, escort missions, side missions, public events. In one instance, I had to guard my secondary camp, do an escort, and participate in a public event all at the same damn time. And you're trying to tell me there's nothing to do? Stop it! Lastly, Let's talk about this Houdini that Bethesda supposedly placed on everybody by tricking gamers into thinking this game would be something different. Now this one boggles me the most because as I recall at E3 2018 at Bethesda's keynote speech during that event, Bethesda told everyone at the press conference that A, there would be no NPCs, B, this was something new they were trying, therefore C, the game would have bugs. Todd Howard on stage even laughed and giggled about this because everybody that is familiar with the series knows what the Fallout bugs, especially at launch, are all about. Now as the point of this whole video alludes to, people are lying about playing this game, but yet still hating on it. I can tell you from personal experience. 90% of the people who have been complaining to me and trying to battle me about this, whether it's on YouTube or Twitter, have not touched the damn game. We go back and forth and they say something and contrary to what Todd Howard and Bethesda told people about the game before release, I checked them on it and say, hey, didn't you see the E3 conference? Hold on, did you really play this game? And then they'll respond back, well, I ain't gotta play a game. Da, 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 da. And then I just gotta do the shut the door emoji on them or something like that, you know what I'm saying, on Twitter or wherever it is, because they're talking foolishness. That's like arguing with somebody over the scenes of a movie that they've never seen. It's just asinine and stupid, and I refuse to do that. And I don't understand how in gaming, this is acceptable. Then you got others lying that have played the game, but they're lying, saying that the Fallout experience, the Fallout 76 experience, that is, is incomplete because it's missing NPCs, okay? So let's let's tackle this one here because this is the one I have the most fun with because this is like of the most ridiculous. Okay, so fact of the matter is, you still get quests. You still get to loot items and search the wastelands. You still get to fight monsters, more so than in any other Fallout game, and you still get to make choices. The thing is, you just don't have a dialogue for the choices. Choices are now made by what missions you do and how you complete them. Therefore, the overwhelming majority in the design of the Fallout game is open world exploring. No denying that. So with that being the case, someone please riddle me this. How in the f is the Fallout experience purely based on NPC interaction? 
Okay, so if you're not following me here, let, let, let's try it this way, okay? Say you go to Golden Corral often. You love going to Golden Corral. When you get to Golden Corral, there is a plethora of different things to eat, right? It's a buffet. For those of you not familiar with Golden Corral, it is a buffet chain here in the United States, okay? You get there, there's just an array of different things to have. Mashed potatoes, fried chicken, pizza, hoagies, you know, all types of stuff. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of things, cakes, cookies, pies, you know, all that shit that we greedy Americans love to have, right? But every time you go to Golden Corral, all you get are the garlic wings. That's all you get. That's all you put on your plate. You put the garlic wings on your plate, and then you eat them. You go back for more garlic wings until you're done, pay your check, Go leave your tip, go about your business until the next time you go to the Golden Corral. So let's say in a subsequent visit, you go back to Golden Corral. Guess what? They are out of garlic wings. They are none. You look at the waiter. You say, oh, my bad. I got to roll. Pick up your hat, get your coat, turn around like there's no tomorrow. So under that scenario, are you a fan of Golden Corral or are you just a fan of the garlic wings? Because there's dozens of other things there that make up the menu. The whole Golden Corral experience. The cookies, the pies, the juice, the mashed potatoes, you know what I'm saying, the pizza rolls. But you really don't care for it unless the wings are there. So, I guess not, right? You're just a fan of the garlic wings. I mean, you may have entertained some baby spinach on the side or some carrots or something like that. But if it wasn't without them garlic wings, it was a no-go. So, if that's the case in that scenario... How the hell do you guys and gals consider yourselves Fallout fans just because the dialogue chain is not there? Missions are still there. The journeying is still there. The enemy is still there. The character building is still there. Everything that is autonomous of the dialogue and can be done separate from any dialogue tree is still there. And you don't want to play? The game is empty? Well then guess what folks? You're not Fallout fans! You're a fan of experiences with dialogue trees, but the rest of the Fallout experience is not good enough for you to maintain your interest. Period! I mean, what? Wait, let's be serious here. Were you trying to tell me that you go out journeying the wasteland for hours, scavenge for cups and tin cans and all this other stuff, just so you can go back to a village and have a conversation with Jacob? Because that's enthralling to you? Come on, stop! So in closing, and here's why I had to make this video. And quite honestly, here's why I'm a little perturbed. You know what I'm saying? It's because this fake rage is messing up what was a cool experience for us non-rage warriors, okay? You got these crybabies out here that have caused Bethesda to get out of Element and start sending rush 50 gig patches that had temporarily made the game bad across the board. You know what I'm saying? That was true for a day or two. Messed up the whole experience. My game was crashing and freezing and everything. This is out of the element of how Bethesda normally handles this situation with Fallout releases. Now, since then, they have put out a patch to fix and stabilize the game, and it has worked. But you know what? If I'm Bethesda, if I'm, if I'm running Bethesda after this whole mishap, I'm going to say this. F*** you console gamers. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go straight to PC. I'm going to make sure my shit is, is, is operated on PC properly. And then I'll release to the console version later. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of this fake rage is coming from the console side. My, now, from what I understand, my PC brethren, they got an issue. They got a true issue. And there's actually going to be a part two to this video. And I'll address that in that part two. But all this hoopla from the console people that never played the game, that just want to hate on Bethesda, fuck them, make them wait. Now, does MM2K think the game is perfect? No, I don't think the game is perfect. But the game is being enjoyed by plenty of fans, including myself. And because of that, I think it's definitely worth a look for you to do your own due diligence and try out too. You know what I'm saying? And that's it from your boy, MM2K. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to pull the scab off like I told you. But if you could do me a favor, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always say, you could come with me or you could come at me. It don't matter to your boy. And if you like what I had to say, you know where to find me. I'm on the corner of every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples, Dirk Brigitte. 
TRS, the Fusion Wolf, you know what I mean? We do a show called Scram Punks every Wednesday on this very same channel, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? Check it out. It's a hell of a show. And lastly, support my brethren, the Broadband Bullies, you know what I'm saying? Check out that Discord link, you know, that's popping in there. Check out that Patreon link, you know, show us some love, you know what I mean? And check out that gear. It's fly. And as always, hey, look, be your own man, be your own woman. You got to do your own due diligence out here in these gaming streets, period. And be waiting for that part two of this video. And as always, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.